welcome to vlogmas number four so this morning i took Doran out for a walk it's great miserable and misty like it sprays in your face so absolutely dismal weather then we came back i did my makeup my hair and it's just dark like i need to film my perfume collection because that's the topic of today's video and i don't know will you be able to see anything like it's daytime after filming that i'll make granola and then i'll make my breakfast yeah the other part of the video today is baking so i'm gonna bake a banana loaf and then something else that i'll show you later on now let's open my luxatan calendar um have i opened i actually haven't opened day seven and it's day eight today that's weird oh another hand cream i'll have a ton of hand creams this is a lavender scented one that's so nice but i'm pretty sure i'll use them up this month because they're tiny and my hands are ridiculously dry right now my hand, my lips, my skin because of the heating and also the cold outside it just says here turn down the heat, be cool and turn your heating down not gonna happen <laughs> I hate being cold so um, day 8 <gasps> oh my god this is one of my favorite products it's the almond bath oil so it's like an oil that turns into foam like it foams up it's very moisturizing and it smells incredible this almond range we're done for today and i actually also forgot to have my ginger shots <laughs> um so let's grab one the camera is on the box of my quality street so i'm gonna have a chocolate later after my breakfast because i don't want one now Oh dear. My mouth is on fire. I don't know how people enjoy these. Like my cousin has no problem taking these shots. My eyes are actually tearing up. Okay. <laughs> Let me go take the camera to my bedroom where I think I'm gonna film my perfume collection because all my perfumes are there. So guys, we are in my bedroom. Uh, this is probably a pretty strange setup going on. I'm just sat on my bed <laughs> next to the shelf uh, where I keep all my perfumes and then I have a computer right in front of me to be able to tell you what the notes in these perfumes are uh, because I can't remember off the top of my head uh, the notes of each of the perfumes I remember some because I love perfumes and I love reading about them but can't remember them all so this little shelf thingy is from Madame Juju I'm gonna link it down below let me start by I guess telling you what sort of perfumes I like and what notes I love in perfumes. I used to hate citrusy perfumes but now I really like them, especially for summer. I go for something um, quite juicy and citrusy and then uh, I also used to hate rose and now I adore rose and I actually don't think I have rose perfumes in my collection but I'm definitely getting some. Um, say hi to Dorian and um, so I like quite sweet fragrances but I hate fruity florals like I cannot stand fruity fragrances you know those sugary sweet heady uh, scents I used to like them when I was a teenager but I like sweetness in a sort of more natural way like um, vanilla coconut I love woodsy scents like I love sandalwood gayak I think it's called wood I like oud but not I'm not massive on it I like cedar wood vetiver those sort of earthy woodsy natural uh, smells I also like white flowers so I love jasmine 
uh, gardenia, tuberose, I love ylang ylang, I really like amber as well. So, <laughs> he's so, so sweet, he wants to cuddle. <laughs> baby. So I guess I'm gonna start with heavier, darker scents. The heaviest perfume that I have is Stoneford Black Orchid. I think a lot of people know it or own it by now. It's definitely, it has become, oh wow, it's gorgeous. It has become a cult fragrance, but the bottle is almost full. Like I barely ever wear it because one is very recognizable to its extremely potent and heady and dark. I used to only wear it in winters and when I would go out to like a concert, theater, somewhere fancy. It's like my fancy fragrance so I'm gonna keep it because I have minimized my collection. I gave away some of the scents I don't wear anymore but this is very special to me so I'm gonna keep it and it was created as a female perfume but it has become unisex because men started wearing it as well. So to me it's like flowers and dark chocolate. It has a very strong orchid note. It's very hard to put your finger on this perfume because it's a very subtle mix of very, I would say almost unmixable ingredients that you would wonder how are they gonna work together, but they do. Like it has everything packed in it and yet it's such a sophisticated scent. It has wood to notes like patchouli and sandalwood, two of the notes I absolutely love. Dark chocolate, incense, amber, vetiver, vanilla. It has black currant, orange, ylang ylang, jasmine, gardenia. So I definitely um, can smell all the florals and chocolate, I would say. So yeah, it's a gorgeous fragrance that I should probably wear more often now that it's uh, winter. Then we have Alien by Thierry Mugler, which is an explosion of jasmine and amber. It is a love or hate uh, scent. It, with Thierry Mugler, you are either an angel or an alien girl. I'm definitely more into alien. And it's a perfume that has lots of memories tied to it, so I don't wear it anymore. And I don't know if I will. Uh, it smells of Paris to me, basically. Perfumes tie with memories so strongly. I feel like every scent evokes a certain memory uh, to me. So yeah, to me it just smells like evening walks in Paris. It's very heady, very uh, dark and rich fragrance. So definitely not for everyone, but it's beautiful. Then we have Diptyque Eau Duel. Um, which is a spicy vanilla scent. To me it actually smells like chai tea. It's incense, it's very strong on incense, vanilla and spices. It's, so it's like a very cozy scent. I would say I would wear this on a dark rainy afternoon reading a book at a coffee shop. It actually has a picture of Taj Mahal so I guess saying it smells like chai tea makes sense. I love the tea bottles, they're so beautiful and they have a picture on the back. How pretty is that? I actually would love to get more diptyque fragrances because they are very unique uh, scents although they have become quite common but they're still I feel like very special. There are lots of their scents that I really like. So this one has cardamom, olibanum, bergamot, pink pepper, juniper, saffron, black tea, musk, ambergris and bourbon vanilla. So as I said, lots of spices and tea. I remember when my friend smelled it, she was like, Ugh, it smells like a grandmother. But I guess to each their own. I like it. Let's go with this one. This one is Elisab um, Le Parfum. So just the classic Elisab fragrance. I think this was the first one he released. And you guys might remember from my older videos, I was head over heels with this fragrance. Also, the bottle is really pretty. I said that this is my signature perfume. This is the most beautiful thing. But now I I kind of got over it. Like I don't I don't like it that much anymore. I kind of put my finger on what it is. Maybe my taste has slightly changed. I guess I liked it for that period of my life. Uh, I believe I was at uni when I wore this a lot. It actually has all my favorite notes in it. So it has orange blossom, rose, honey, jasmine, cedar, patchouli. 
so it is very beautiful but maybe it's also the fact that it has expired because it definitely has it's not this dark so they have a an intense version which is dark and the classic version which is um, light colored this is what happened to it because it was here uh, facing sunlight in the summer I know this is not how you're supposed to keep your perfumes they should be tucked away in the dark away from daylight and sunlight um, but I don't know I just like having my perfumes exposed here and so some of them turn bad so maybe it's that, I don't know. It sort of smells old-fashioned now. So maybe it's because it's expired, I don't know. But yeah, if you like honey, flowers, rose, this is a beautiful, beautiful scent. Okay, then we have Guerlain. This is called Mont Guerlain. It was gifted to me, it has my name in English engraved on it. It says Eve. It's a very Art Deco looking bottle and this it's such a beautiful perfume. It's I think it's one of the only perfumes I got compliments on when I wore it, but I don't wear it enough. This one is so beautiful. It's very gentle, very mild, but very, very classy and sophisticated, I would say. Guerlain know how to make very, very luxurious, high quality fragrance. I mean, they're known for perfume. This one has notes of vanilla, lavender, iris. I love iris because it has that powdery feel to it and it smells like, um, iris to me smells like an expensive soap. This one is a very beautiful combination of very soft powdery florals and woods like sandalwood, patchouli, it has vanilla in it. So it's sweet but in a classy way, like not a fruity floral but more of a woodsy, soft, powdery, floral, sweet. Yeah, it's, it's a very elegant scent and I definitely want to wear it more often. I feel like it's great for autumn, winter as well. It's not very summery, I wouldn't say. Okay, then we have Premier Fugue Extreme by L'Artisan Parfumeux. It's so, so beautiful. Um, and this is a fragrance that's hated with a passion by my mother. <laughs> but I love, love, love it. Basically, it is a milky, ripe, juicy fig. You have a little bit of woodsiness with sandalwood to it, but it's mostly uh, coconut, it has almond milk uh, in it and fig. So it's that sort of milky ripe fig. Uh, Diptyque does Philosicus, which is a fresh, young, green, almost grassy fig. This is a complete opposite. It's a coconutty fig, so it smells like summer in a bottle. It has that super natural, organic, earthy smell to it. Let's move on to my two, Jo Malone. Uh, fragrances. So now they have Jo Malone in Lithuania as well. Uh, this one I bought in Paris years and years and years and years ago. And this one I got maybe a year, a year and a half ago in Copenhagen. This one was limited edition so I'm very happy that I purchased it because you cannot get it anymore. It's honey and crocus. And it just smells like honey to me. You guys know I love honey scents. It's very, very um, cozy. Like, it smells like a warm hug, like my Zadiga Voltaire perfume. This one has honey, lavender, saffron, and almond milk again. Yeah. It's just a cozy fragrance and I love wearing it in winter. And then this one is Nectarine and Blossom, which is from their permanent line. And I haven't worn that much because I'm not a fan of this fragrance. I remember I got it because I thought it would smell like honey and I definitely purchased it on a whim and it smells exactly like a Christmas tree. It smells nothing like honey, it just smells green. I don't know, it just smells like a Christmas tree, so I actually like wearing it on Christmas day. <laughs> and that's why I haven't worn too much. I know it's a very popular scent from Jo Malone. Um, then we have Alaya. This is what the bottle looks like, it's very pretty. And this is uh, very small, I think it's travel size. It's only 10 milliliters. It's Alaya nude actually. 
Oh, it's stunning and it smells like China to me because this is a perfume I wore in China when uh, I went to visit Auxa in Beijing. It actually evokes the whole trip for me. Funnily enough, I don't like any other Alaya perfumes. I think the first one was in a black bottle, didn't like that at all. But this one is so stunning. It's very woodsy. It's just woods. Um, it has cedar in it, musk. Yeah, like woodsy, musky, uh, but very sweet scent. So let me see. It has notes of cedar, cashmere, um, orange blossom, tonka bean, musk, and leather. So absolutely stunning notes. Sweet, but in a woodsy sort of natural way. Um, yeah, I think it's a very special perfume. And we have a pretty strange one. It's by Charlotte Tilbury. I will send this one as well. It's called Scent of a Dream and I don't wear it that often because to me it's very very sour. It's it's almost peachy. I don't know. It it's um definitely super unique. Nothing I've ever smelled before, but not sure if I love it. I like it. It's definitely intriguing to me. But I'm not mad about it. Let me read you the, the notes because I cannot pinpoint what the notes are. So this one has notes of lemon and peach. Told you, it's very peachy. Mandarin, bergamot, saffron, black pepper and intoxicating floral heart of tuberose, violet, jasmine, patchouli and incense. Uh, then the base notes, ambroxan, hedion and ESO E Super Molecules. I believe she wanted to create a fragrance that would be sort of an aphrodisiac. Um, I don't know, to me, it's, I can definitely smell the peach and the lemon. It's very sour. Peppery notes mixed with sour notes that don't appeal to me that much. But as I said, it's definitely very, very unique. Now, this is a fragrance I absolutely adore. And it actually smells like India to me, so the Alaya one is China in a bottle, <laughs> um, Mugler is Paris in a bottle, this is India in a bottle because I had a little tester of this fragrance that I brought to India with me. I wore this perfume throughout uh, our trip. I can just close my eyes and see the flowers of India, Jaipur, the colorful cities, Oh my god, evokes so many memories. I love the scent of it. It's a, I didn't even tell you what it is. It's Hermes. It's called Jour d'Hermes uh, Asolu. And the bottle is so, so chic, right? It's a very, very juicy fragrance. Yeah, it smells like summer, like bright colors, sunshine, summer. It has uh, a woodsy base and then it has florals like jasmine, gardenia and they're all topped off by grapefruit so yeah it's like it, i would say it's more citrusy than floral for sure it's a very sparkly uh bubbly uplifting fragrance i actually never wear it in autumn winter it's just my summer fragrance so it's gonna have to wait for summer then we have miss dior Cherie, which is a classic that probably a lot of girls have owned um, or still own. This was gifted to me by my dad. I actually requested that he gets this perfume for me when he went on a trip. Um, I think it has gone off because I believe I had it for like maybe eight years. Yeah, it seems like it's gone off. This one is a fruity floral. I guess one of those fruity florals that I can tolerate, but I'm not into it anymore. I have outgrown it. I used to absolutely adore it. And again, it's one of the perfumes that will get you lots of compliments. So let me tell you what the notes are. It has strawberry, cherry, pineapple, popcorn, caramel, violet, rose, jasmine, um, patchouli, musk, and amber. So a ton of different notes. I would say it's in the family of Lancome, La Vie Belle, 
uh, Victor and Roll Flower Balm, YSL Black Opium. So if you like those perfumes, you are most likely going to like Monsieur Cherie. Although this one has been reformulated so many times, I don't even know which version this is. Um, but yeah, it's a, definitely a fruity floral, very girly, feminine fragrance that I'm not so into anymore, but it's still in my collection for memories. And then we have some Chanel's. So Chanel Coco Mademoiselle is one of those classic fragrances that I will probably always have in my collection, that I will probably always love. It is so ridiculously popular and very recognizable. I can instantly smell it if someone wears it. Uh, but I just adore it. I love it on myself as much as I love it on other people. I first got it in my last year of high school, so grade 12. I was 18, so 10 years ago. Uh, been wearing it for 10 years now. So we had this group of friends, two of them were guys, and I remember uh, we just had lunch and he was walking behind me and he said, Yeva, you smell so incredible. I'm just gonna follow the trace of your perfume. And I was wearing Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. And I get compliments from guys on this perfume all the time. It's a very guy-proof fragrance. They seem to love it. Mm -hmm. It's an ultimate perfection. It's iconic. You cannot not love it. So the notes of this fragrance are orange blossom, um, mandarin, bergamot, mimosa, jasmine, turkish rose, ylang ylang, tonka bean, patchouli, vanilla, vetiver, and white musk. Citruses, white flowers, and woods, everything that I love. Uh, so this one is actually a fresh moisture mist, body mist, and I love buying it because it smells exactly the same as um, you know, a perfume, but you get so much. You get 100 mils in here and it's like a very beautiful fine mist that you can just spray all over, spray it in your hair. And I finished my bottle. I had this um, refillable travel size bottle. I don't know where it is, probably at my parents' home. And I also have this body lotion in my bathroom. And then this is fresh hair mist that I got just to use in my hair. I don't know why I got it, because I could just use this in my hair. But yeah, I wanted to have everything from this uh, Coco Mademoiselle line. Love, love, love it. It's a very expensive scent. When I have it on, I feel very classy. Like, it instantly elevates the way I feel. Um, it's very elegant and classy fragrance. And then I have Chanel Chance of Fresh Body Mist. Um, which is my summer scent. I take it on holiday with me. They have Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, I think it's called, and some other ones. So this one has the notes of pink pepper, water, hyacinth, uh, jasmine, teak wood, iris, amber, patchouli, vet vetiver, and musk. So again, the notes that I love, wood, iris, lemon. Now let me take you to my bathroom where I keep three of my uh, fragrances that I love the most and wear all the time. So again, sorry guys for the light in my bathroom. Uh, there's not much I can do. Let me tell you about my top three fragrances. So Chanel Beige is probably my signature scent. Although I don't really know which one is my <laughs> signature scent. This, this, or Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. So this one has notes of honey, freesia, frangipani flower, which was all over India, and hawthorn in it. And uh, like I've mentioned before, it smells like an expensive soap to me. Like it's very clean. It smells like fresh laundry or an expensive soap. So it's very, very simple. But at the same time, there's something special about it, that Chanel quality, I guess. Yeah, it's just beautiful. And when I smell it on my jumpers or my scarves, I'm like, oh, it's gorgeous. Um, and it's very long lasting. Um, then we have In Flora by Bottega Profumeria. I was sent this, so I didn't know about this brand or this perfume. And I fell head over heels um, for this perfume. I wore it throughout 
I think the whole summer. It smells like the summer to me now. <laughs> And I had probably the best summer. And although this one is called Inflora, I smell more orange in it. So it has orange, mandarin, it has freesia, rose, lily. And then it also has amber and musk at the base, which I kind of really smell. To me, it's very orangey and rosy, like orange and rose. So very juicy, yummy, a fresh, young rose. Um, absolutely stunning fragrance and I want to say a huge thanks to Christiana for gifting me this fragrance because I love it so much now <laughs> oh this was actually also gifted to me by Christiana so thanks to them I have discovered some of my absolute favorite fragrances this uh, <laughs> Oh, this is heavenly and I got my friend Alexa hooked on it and she it's her signature scent. It's Zadiga Voltaire. This is her. Um, it has notes of jasmine, vanilla, uh, chestnut, sandalwood, whipped cream. So it smells, it smells very milky. I believe I described it before as a warm hug. It smells exactly like a warm hug to me or like a warm blanket. My when I wore it to my aunt's house once, she said you almost smell like a baby. Like it's that it's that milky newborn baby scent. It's very clean, very yeah, just very cozy, warm, yummy, almost edible, almost caramelly a little bit. It's just absolutely gorgeous, and I got so many messages from you guys saying that you got this perfume and now you love it as well. So yeah, those are my top three fragrances this is the body lotion i told you about um yeah when you wear this oh you smell like heaven those are all my fragrances and you guys might wonder what fragrance is on my wish list and that is rose anonym by atelier cologne i think it's called it's so beautiful my friend has it and that's how i learned about this fragrance it's a very deep wood and rose scent it's so 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 beautiful so it's definitely the next fragrance on my wish list oh and also wonderwood by comme des garçons um, i want to have it in my collection as well so those two fragrances i think anyway if i get any new fragrances you guys will know about it uh, but i hope you enjoyed and now let's go make my granola yeah these are all of the ingredients i already did a separate video on my channel on how to make homemade granola so yeah i'm just gonna throw all these ingredients in here we have uh, golden uh, linseed we have oatmeal then we have hemp seed some more linseed um, chia seeds pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and then some honey and sunflower seed oil uh, to mix everything together so yeah let's do this I'm gonna leave it in there for about 20-30 minutes and I'll have to be constantly shuffling it so that it doesn't burn okay my granola is done now I'm gonna leave it here to cool off and then I will pop it all into a jar so it will be nice and crunchy it looks amazing look at this one we had our walk so he ate now he just wants to sleep <laughs> the granola has cooled off it's nice and crunchy now oh god mm, i'm gonna make my coffee and have some granola with greek yogurt i'm gonna put everything into this jar okay let's make my breakfast I'm gonna have half a yogurt and the granola. Oh my god, it's so yummy this time. I was actually quite generous with honey, so it's a little chunky. I'm 
banana. Some more blueberries. So I've added some almond flakes and now I'm gonna add a little bit of peanut butter. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make my coffee now. Mm, I'm gonna have purple today. It's intensity 8. What is it called? Profondo. I get so many questions from you guys on this milk frother. So it's by Philips and it's called Senseo and my coffee machine is Nespresso Cities. Oh, that's a great froth today. I wanted to show you these because today I bought these two plants. I just fell for this color. It's such a yummy uh, baby pink. And then I got this which is quite a common plan to have a big one at home and for both of them i paid three euros i've already depotted them in uh, the pots that i had at home and used soil but yeah in Sudlandas ikea supermarket they have this little section of plants and they're pretty much all dying or like in a sad looking condition and they're all like one to four euros uh, so I thought I will get them and I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep them alive. I give it maybe two weeks before they die because my windows face to the west so I don't get any sun in the morning, only in the evenings. And now that it's winter I can forget sun in the evenings so I pretty much live in the darkness. My plants will struggle. If you know any plants that don't require a lot of sun, uh, you can leave it in the if you you can actually leave some recommendations in the comments below that would be nice one of them will live in my bedroom and the other one here on my window so okay so these are all of the ingredients you're gonna need for banana loaf 300 grams of plain flour 250 grams of brown sugar 150 grams of melted butter this isn't melted yet and I'm using baking butter but I'm gonna melt it in a second, two eggs, two ripe bananas, unfortunately only one of them is ripe, um, one and a half teaspoon of cinnamon, uh, one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. Uh, this is my bowl where I'm gonna mix everything. First thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 170 degrees celsius and you have to beat two eggs with sugar uh, using a mixer and you have to beat them until fluffy and melt my butter Let's see how the butter is doing. It's melting nicely. Okay, now you're supposed to add the rest of the ingredients to the mixture. Um, and now I'm gonna mash this ripe banana and add it to the mixture. So now I'm gonna pour it in here. Then I'm gonna add in the flour. Now I'm gonna beat this yummy mixture.
Here we go, we have the batter. It looks amazing and it smells incredible. I'm gonna try some now. Oh my god. So now you're supposed to uh, line your baking tray with parchment paper. What you want to do next is slice up the banana and then put it on top of the loaf and then sprinkle some brown sugar on top. This is what it should look like. Then you're supposed to bake it for 30, 40 minutes. So let's put it in the oven now. Okay, let's get the banana loaf out of the oven. Oh, wow. Yum. It looks amazing. So now I'm gonna leave it to cool off. Um, but yeah. Oh my god, it looks so yummy. Cannot wait to try it. So I think I mentioned this to you, but I got this gorgeous glitter liner from H&M when I went to Vilnius because they have H&M Beauty there. We don't have it here in Klebola. Uh It's called Glitterati Mascara Liner. So it doubles up as a mascara. I'll show you how. And I absolutely love it. I believe they have six different shades, I want to say. Okay, I think it's in focus. I think you can see now. So this bit you can use as a mascara wand um, and then the tip as a liner, which I think is so clever. Here it is on my eyes as a liner and I also used a little bit on my lower lash line as well. Um, but I haven't tried it as a mascara yet. I want every color now which is very pretty um, in winter, you know, it's all dark outside um, so your eyes twinkle in the street light. So I've been sad editing my vlogmas by the Sunday um, evening, which means it's time for me to head back to my parents to watch Dancing with the Stars. It's a tradition of ours now. I'll have to pick up my cousin Linda on the way and we'll all watch together and eat my banana loaf which hopefully will taste nice. So I'm taking this, I'm taking Dorian with me, who's already waiting <laughs> to be picked up, and off we go. And I think that's gonna be it for today's vlogmas. So thank you for watching. Look at that, yuck. Absolutely disgusting weather and look at all the like mud and stuff. By the way, all my books are still here and I really want to bring them all to my apartment, but I don't have a bookcase. And also all my Harry Potter collection and Shakespeare. <laughs> Mom decided to use a fake Christmas tree. Me, not feeling it. Nothing like a real thing. We have all our decorations. Um, This is leftover from my tree. These are so pretty. Oh <laughs> 